Hey everybody, welcome back to Intrepid Exotics. So are you a new reptile keeper? Have you just recently picked up a snake or you've had one that you've had for a while and you just can't really seem like you're connecting with it, um, stays hidden all the time, you can't really interact with it, and it just doesn't look like it's comfortable? Well, we hear that a lot, uh, particularly with folks that are just now getting into snakes and, and you know bringing their first, second ones home, maybe a new one of a different species. So what we want to talk about today is some things that you can do to set your snake up, make sure that they're comfortable, make sure that they're taken care of, and <clears throat> kind of getting to know what they need in order to relax and feel comfortable around you so that they can do for you like what mine do for me. And they're out all over the place a lot of the time. Um, you know, I've got a ball python right here, a little ghost ball python that's about two years old. I've got my one-year-old Burmese girl down here who just got moved into this new enclosure. And, of course, my uh, female retic, who's been out once today, and she still wants to come out and play some more. You can see she's right there at the corner of the door, always wanting to come out. I'll take her out again today at some point. <laughs> but i still got some enclosures to clean and stuff today. So if you guys are anything like me, when you get a snake and you bring it home, you know, you're really looking forward to being able to interact with it and, you know, see it cruising around its enclosure and checking everything out. You know, we, we hear it so much that, you know, folks will go out, they'll get their first snake or, you know, one of the first ones that they've had or they may just end up getting a, getting a problem animal or something. And, you know, they're like, man, I've had this thing for a while. I got the enclosure all set up exactly the way I was told to and put them in there and they just ran and hide and they stayed in there well most of the time when you're getting getting snakes they're going to be younger in most cases um you know like i said this little two-year-old ball python got him when he was a hatchling and this girl right here i'm gonna go ahead and take her out she's um this is my year old uh female burmese python and i just put her in this enclosure um today actually and she is getting upgraded because she's a growing girl because earlier this week I was working on a new enclosure for my boy Imperator I was able to find this old hutch that was being given away and cut the panels out put some plexi in there put a radiant heat panel up underneath the platform in it and had him all set with a bigger enclosure now so he can move around a little bit better and a quick note on that too anytime you're putting a snake into a new enclosure make sure you're disinfecting it like mad um you know every inch of it needs to be scrubbed and disinfected uh, definitely don't want to be transferring anything from one animal to another um, never never assume that everything in your collection is healthy you need to treat it like everybody has got something and you know take precautions just to make sure that you know if one of your snakes does have something that you're not aware of you're not transferring it from one to the other <clears throat> But the point that I'm making with her is that when you first get a snake, they may be just like this. Um, they may be nice and chill. They might be just checking things out. You know, she wants to check out the camera right now. There you go. Look at that pretty girl. But um, more often than not, they're going to be scared to death. Um, you don't know what kind of environment they're coming from. A lot of times some of the you know I mean some of these animals can be pretty traumatized through transit um, you know through sitting out in the open in a pet store or something like that having kids banging on the glass all day long um, I know that would drive me crazy and I'm quite certain it does the same thing to the snakes so um, first thing to, to, to keep in mind is that when you first get your animal there's a really good chance that it's gonna be really frightened and the only way to have a good relationship with it is to help it get over that and to help it get comfortable. So you'll see the way I would set her enclosure up. And this is the way I set all of them up. I'll show you up here with the ball python as well. But I've got a radiant heat panel up top here. And thermostat set and so forth. So that's set, set on a comfortable temperature for her. And I've got... I've got more hides than I need, really. Um, she's got one little hide all the way in the back there. She's got this little hide. And then over here on the cool side, 
she's got another hide that she can go into and the purpose for that is so that they can regulate their own body temperature and still feel secure if you've only got one hide in the enclosure and it's right under the heat source then a snake that's not secure is going to stay in there when otherwise they may want a cooler temperature and want to uh you know want to regulate their body temperature but they don't feel safe enough to do it so they're going to stay in that hot hide conversely if you've got it on the cool side then you know the snake may eat it may sit there in the cool side afraid to leave its hide and it doesn't metabolize its meals properly so um you know there, there's a couple basic things that snakes are going to need they need their temperature controlled um and they do need to be able to thermoregulate themselves to stay comfortable. Um, so you're typically looking at a swing of 10 degrees or so, you know, maybe 75 degrees to 85 degrees at a basking spot or something like that. It's going to vary for each snake, but they're going to need a certain level of humidity. And just about every snake I've ever had really loves their water bowl. This girl right here, she'll curl up in her water bowl half the time. Um, yeah, the ball python, the retic, the berm, all of them do that. Uh, particularly when they're getting ready to shed and stuff like that but um so you definitely want to make sure that you're getting the right amount of hides in there so that these guys have got a place where they can go get away from everything and just relax um let me put her back in there and another thing that i like to do as well is I like to have rocks right up under the heaters because those will absorb the heat and you know sometimes if they really you know want to warm up and bask after a meal then they can get up on that rock and have a really nice warm spot for it, just like they would in a while. Now this is a really good example of a, of a comfortable socialized snake right here and she is doing really good. But you may find yourself with an animal that you know you get it you bring it home if you're trying to interact with it in the first couple days or something it may be really defensive and maybe striking at you it may just curl up into a ball you know if you if you bring it home a new hog nose it may roll over a musk and play dead uh, and, and these are all signs that the animal's just really stressed out so a good rule of thumb when you're bringing any animal home for the first time is you get it set up you make sure the parameters are set you make sure he's got a hot and a cool hide he's got water then he's got everything that he needs right there to be comfortable and then you leave him alone um you know let him let him sit there for a week don't worry about feeding him because you know the, the change in environment and all that stuff can stress them out um it, it's better to give them time to acclimate and get comfortable before you try and feed them so you know this guy right here when i first got him that's the way he was I mean, this, this snake was curled up into a ball for the first, uh, easy the first month. He just would not come out of his hide. It took forever to really get him eating well. But all you can do in that case is, like I said, just, just leave him alone and let him get comfortable. And then what I tend to do with him is instead of trying to break the ice by handling them, if they're really defensive and they're really insecure, is I'll break the ice with food. So, you know, leave them alone for that period of time. And when the first time you interact with them, let that be a feeding experience. So they're all settled in, they're comfortable, they're probably hungry at that point. So give them a prey item. Most of the time they'll take it. Um, I haven't had too many that really wouldn't, especially after you leave them alone like that for a while. So you feed them, leave them alone. They're gonna metabolize that meal. You know, they may start coming out after a couple days, you know, they're going to get, they're going to need to get out. They're going to need to get a drink of water and things like that. Um, but if they don't, don't stress it. Wait until the next feeding time, feed them again. And, you know, it's really a marathon with these guys. Um, you've really got to have the patience to, you know, understand that in order for them to get comfortable, they've really got to be kind of left to their own devices. Now you'll hear people say all the time that your snakes don't form an attachment to you and things like that and they just don't have the same mindset that say a dog does or something. But um, my personal opinion, just from the experiences that I have with my animals here, um, 
you can see how they're behaving with me standing here. Um, all of these guys get out on a regular basis. And, you know, this guy right here, he knows that when I come down here a lot of times, I'm going to open up the top and I'm going to reach in and take him out and let him roam around a little bit. This girl right here, she knows that I'm interacting with her all the time. So she's sitting here right there with her head watching me. And, of course, there's Monty down here. Let me turn the camera down a little bit. See, she's right here at my feet, right there by the door, waiting to come out. So, you know, try not to get too discouraged when your snakes aren't really warming up to you as quickly as you think they will, because it takes time and, you know, didn't happen with any of these guys overnight. Uh, like I said, it just, ta just takes that patience to let them get cozy. And then eventually, you know, they're going to get used to their environment. They're going to get used to the feeding schedules. They're, you know, these animals are, you know, really smart. And they pick up on their routines. They learn what's safe and what's not over time, especially if you get them as a hatchling. Um, you know, the, the, the filial generations, you know, F1, F2, F3, and so forth down the line. The, uh, the, the more generations that are bred into captivity, the more accustomed to human contact they get, oddly enough. And the guys will do really good for you. But if you're having problems and you're really discouraged with them, um, and, and they're really not interacting with you the way they, the way that you would like, um, uh, I can't emphasize it enough. Exercise some self-control, put them in there, make sure they've got everything that they need, and then just go hands off, leave them alone, let them get comfortable. Uh, I think you're going to find that in most cases, after you've done that for a little while, and you've just kind of let them settle in and get comfortable, you're going to be able to interact with them a lot easier than um yeah than, than you may be maybe having to deal with right now and since my female retake has been here so patiently waiting to come out i'm gonna let her out for a second just let her say hi keep your enclosures locked come on like I said, even though she's already been out once today, I'm still using the hook. I'm still not going straight in with my hands. And this is where reading their behavior is really important. Let me see if I can get her head because she's going straight to the floor. Okay. If you watch her behavior, she's got them nice long tongue flicks. You know, it's shifting left to right. She's kind of figuring out what's going to get her attention the most. And it tends to be over there. She loves that side for some reason. So we're just gonna, hey sweetie, what are you doing? Come on, go say hi to everybody. Come on. And when you've got your big snakes out, everything is just really slow and deliberate. Make sure you keep their body supported. Make sure you don't let them get around your neck, no matter how much they might want to. There we go. And again, being the second time that she's out today, she really wants to just get out and roam. And this is something that you've really got to watch with your bigger snakes. Is turn this down a little bit, let you see. You see how she's got my leg wrapped up right here? She has got a really tight grip on there. And it's not because she's trying to take me down. It's because she's suspended in the air. She's a heavy snake and she's holding on. You know, she's got to stay secure. So, this is how 
your relationships with these animals can be if you just give them enough space and you know respect the fact that you know they're not always going to be comfortable and we've just got to make sure that we do everything that we can to keep them give them the most comfortable life that we can keep most of the stress away from them and um, you know they'll do they'll do really good for you you know whether you're getting a ball python or you're getting a baby retic you know it's particularly important that you do everything right when you've got a baby retic because this snake when she was young you know you say the size of uh size of my burmese over there she uh if i would have started that whole relationship with her by stressing her out and doing things that frightened her you know she's going to remember all those things and i would not have the relationship with her that i've got today i guarantee it Come on, girl. So really the whole point of the video today is, is we're always taught and we don't even really need to be taught in most cases. If you've got a big snake, we know we got to respect it. You know, it's a big snake. Um, it can give us a really good wrestling match and um, draw blood when they want to. You know, so we've got a natural respect for those and we treat them a certain way. Now, when we're getting our hatchlings, our babies, our ball pythons, things like that, they're not as dangerous. People aren't afraid of them. But you still owe them the same respect as a small harmless snake as you do the biggest constrictor in the world. You know, our, our, our goal with keeping these, of course, is to have good relationships with the animals, and you've just got to maintain that respect with them. Now, we've had some really cool participation in the videos here lately. I've gotten some really awesome feedback. I really appreciate it, man. The subscribers out there are just awesome, and I cannot wait <clears throat> to get things built up even bigger and bigger. And the subscribers are going to do that. So by all means, get down, click the subscribe button. That's what helps us grow. Get down in the comments if you've got any more questions. I try to be as responsive as I can in the comments. And put out content as I see questions arising, either here or in different groups and so forth. So we're out here trying to make everything easier on all of us. And I've also got a video here coming out uh, sometime over the weekend. North Carolina has a uh, proposed tagu ban. Uh, just like the one that hit South Carolina uh, that's on the table. So we're working with US Arc and NC Arc, which are awesome organizations. I'll put the links down there in the description for those as well. Get involved with them. If you've got any interest in keeping reptiles either now or in the future, please get involved with them because, you know, there's organizations out there that are making laws based on bad information. And, you know, and folks out there like NC Arc and US Arc that are just working to counter that and to help us maintain our ability to have these relationships with these awesome animals. So don't forget to click like if you like, get subscribed, get notified, and I will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics. Do you have a natural love for animals? Then come along with us as we explore what it's like living with and caring for some of the most unique animals on the planet, our reptiles. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics.